Hello, everybody. This is from Milwaukee to Nashville. I'm Daniel Goodwill. And over there, we have John Lundowski. Hey. How you doing, John? I'm doing pretty good. Um, for those of us, for those of you, before I do this, let me, I'm going to be real serious here for a second. Um, the two of us who mainly run the day-to-day -day here at from Milwaukee to Nashville have had some health issues recently. Um, me with my chest and John with his chest. Um, he's yeah. having um, lung issues, and um, I just wish, uh, I hope you all understand that if we're a little behind on things, um, this is why we've had a lot of stuff this week not really roll our way um, on a personal level. I'm not going to get into that, <laughs> but um, we've had a really rough week, so uh, we're kind of playing catch up here, so uh, why we're here is the free agency video. Much love to our sponsor who has stuck it out with us for through this. Thank you for his support so much because it has been really hard for us to even want to get in front of camera with all this going on. Because for us, it is a very difficult thing to do when you are lacking confidence because of your health. And or a voice like me and right. yesterday. <laughs> we planned on doing this yesterday. And we had no voice. Right. It could happen. I'm chewing gum over here so I can do the show tonight. Yep. So if you see us struggling a little bit, trying to get through it a little bit, that is why, you know, but we're here. So we're going to give you all of the free agency updates. I have some insane stuff to throw at you. So before that, like I said, I, we, we are so grateful for our sponsor, Hockey Locker. And we're even more grateful for the guys we sponsor in TNT Racing, which John has over there on his wall up <laughs> over there. TNT Racing, they um, uh, have our logo on their car. Um, we run all their social media. We do graphics for them every now and again when we can. Um, we're doing all we can for everybody around us to grow the sport of hockey, to grow yeah. the sports uh, that we care about, like racing. Um, little small community businesses. If you come at us, you don't have to have no money. It, we all know you're recovering from pandemic. Please hit our inbox. If you are a local business and need sponsorship, hit us up. Yeah. We'll put you um, in our little opening credits or end credits, depending on how we do our show that night. If we got a lot coming at you, it's in the end. If we got not so much, it's a beginning like tonight. So let's get into tonight why we're here. Well, while we're here, I would like to uh, um, wish my condolences to uh, Dusty Hill and Joey Jordson, uh, two members of the rock and roll community. Um, rock and roll has a heavy, heavy spot in the hockey community. Um, hot, rock and roll and co uh, country music are the two biggest players inside hockey as far as music brands, um, as far as artists okay. that follow. Um, so for that, I, I wish them well. I know that Pecorine was a huge Slipknot fan. Um, yep. I remember seeing photos of him with members of Slipknot. So um, I would like to wish their family condolences. And uh, uh, I will leave them to their privacy at this time. Um, I just wanted to give you guys some statistics here. Okay. Last year, All in, right. in the first day of free agency, there were 30 signings. Okay. 30. Today alone, there were 20. Right. Today, there were 41. The first day, there was 163. The amount, Crazy. Money, the amount of money on the first day is $785,095,000. We're talking almost a billion dollars in contract there. Yeah. Now you add on top of it day two one hundred and thirty three million eight hundred and two thousand five hundred dollars. That is day two. I say numbers. Day three is twenty eight million three hundred and forty two thousand one hundred and twenty five dollars. And all in all, by end of tomorrow, most likely we're going to be over a billion dollars in the first four days of free agency signing. Oh, yeah. Yep. With that being said, 
why you're all here. The Preds. Let's get into it. The Preds currently have $20 million sitting in sal- and protected prote- projected calorie, salary cap. They have no LTIR use, which means that none of their long-term injury reserve is being used. Yeah. Um, they still have all their picks but the sixth for next year. Um, they traded for uh, – they signed Matt Luff to a one-year, two-way deal worth $700,000. Yep. They signed Matthew Olivier to a two-year extension worth the same, $750,000 for two years. Yep. Um, split amongst those two years equals out to $1.5 million. If he plays both years in the NHL, he will make $1.5 million. I could live off of that easily. <laughs> um, we had signed... We picked up Philip Meyer at 2.55, which saved us $4 million off of Ryan Ellis' cap hit. Yeah. We have signed some AHL talent. Now, when I say AHL talent, we are stocking the cabinet, okay? This is a competitive rebuild. If you if we're competitive, we're competitive. If we're not, we're rebuilding. That's right. how this is going to go. Yeah. It's called restocking the cabinet and retooling. It's not really a rebuild, but it's not really – I'm giving up on everything. It's, right. it's a, we got to fix what we can. Ugh. Give me a second here. Some people don't know the meaning of I'm busy. <laughs> it happens. Yep. Um, we signed e, uh, Tanner Geno to a two-year contract worth $800,000. Yep. 1.6 total. For two years. Um, Yusuf Parsonin will be a new member of the Admirals at uh, $850,000 on an entry-level deal. Grant Mishmash, $842,000 on an entry-level deal. Luke Evangelista will be making his pro debut for the Admirals this season. They re-signed Michael McCarron for $750,000 for two years. Um, we brought in Matt Tennyson who is yep, more of yeah. an AHL depth guy with Carrier going up. Right. So 750000 there. Carrier is only making 733 He signed a team-friendly deal. Right. Um, they signed David Riddich, David Riddich to a one-year $250,000. Um, UC Saros is currently going through arbitration. Basically, yep. um, the easiest way to explain arbitration is if you look at baseball. A player doesn't necessarily want to leave the team, but the team's not offering what he wants. Right. So arbitration is necessary to find a middleman to meet a common ground. Oh, yeah. Saros, if if they cannot meet a contract by Sunday, I think it's like 4 p.m. Sunday, a... Arbitration negotiator will come up with a one-year deal, and RFA will be extended to next year with arbitration. Right. That is all we will have for Soros. Um, David Riddich is another one of those goalies where he can be have a really good night or a really bad night. Soros, we're going to see what he can do. Right. As the main key starter. If Soros and Riddich don't do well, Expect to see Connor Ingram. The yeah. question mark for you Admiral fans are going to be the backup job here in Milwaukee. Right. Is it going to be Thomas Vamaka? Is it going to be Devin Cooley? Is it going to be somebody else that they signed to send down here? Do we, right. don't, we don't know at this point, at the current moment. Yeah, we don't. Go ahead. No, no, I agree with you that, yeah, we don't know what could go on. I mean, like you said, already in the first three days of free agency, not only Nashville, but everybody's making moves, you know? Yes, um, Rem Pitlick is still in RFA, arbitration eligible. He has not activated arbitration, but he has till Sunday to do so. Otherwise, he is just a tendered free agent. Same thing for uh, Saros and Fabro. Billy Tolvanen is a standard free age RFA. I could imagine they're trying to work out a three-year deal to 
to leave him open to RFA on the back end after right. 23-24. Um, just in case um, they are rebuilding and he ends up unhappy. Yeah. Um, they could get something out of that. Um, next year, Luke Coonan, uh, Matt Love, and Yakov Trenton will be all RFAs with arbitration. After uh, Olivier's contract, same thing. Phil Meyer, after two years, he will be RFA with arbitration. Um, so, I mean, we really are in a wait and see with these Preds, but there's a lot to look forward to. Oh, yeah. Um, it's going to be an interesting season. Admirals look like they're in a prime position to repeat when the last time we played. Right. We'll see what happens there. Um, the Predators also have a ton in their in their in their cabinet. Um, they have one, two, three goalies. Eight defensemen. Seven forwards in their cabinet right now. Right. So they have a lot in their cabinet. It's around uh, quite a few players. Um, one, two, three, four, five of them we hold the rights to, whether they come over here now or in 10 years. <laughs> right. Uh, regarding they stay inside the leagues that they're in. Is there rumblings about what might be going on with Askarov? Askarov, um, to make that as simple as possible, Askarov is under contract with, give me a second, let me pull up his elite prospect page here real quick. Um, uh, Yaroslav Askarov is currently under contract with his KHL team. Okay. At the current moment. Um, going, looking forward, I believe that contract ends sometime in after next season. But let me give you a bit of a guarantee here. All righty. Because, you know, life ain't nothing but about a guarantee. Right. <laughs> All righty. Yaroslav Oskarov. Yaroslav Oskarov is signed through the 2021-22 season in the KHL. Okay. Um, he will be playing for SKA St. Petersburg, as well as a couple of our other uh, – new draft prospects. Okay. Um, one of those being um, uh, Fedor Svechkov. Um, he will be playing over there, and he is signed in the KHL until 2022-23. Right, and he was in this year's draft picks. Correct. So he got a three-year deal, much like Askarov did when he got drafted. Okay. So I got to go back here. Uh, I kind of messed up. Whoops. <laughs> no more oops. So make some mistakes here. Bear with me, folks. All right. You got Vladislav Yeraminko, who was another one in the KHL. Uh, Igor Fanasiev has announced he will be playing for the Milwaukee Admirals. Isaac Walther, okay, last year played in the in the SHL. Yeah. He was just accepted to the University of Vermont, announced 15 minutes ago. Oh, wow. Okay. So he is coming over to America, to America. Nice. <laughs> All right, Yusuf Parsonen. We're going to get into him in a second. As far as his contract, David Ferentz will most likely be with the Admirals at least to start the season. Right. 
you know, you never know what defensemen, whether they're going to be good right away or whether it's going to, you know, burn out in physical. Right. Um, Yaros Vladislav Yeramenko, he is a uh, defenseman. He's 22 years old. He's six foot, right handed shot. He was drafted fifth overall by the Preds. Um, he's a really good North American hockey player. Yeah. But he wanted to go play in his home country before he, he went to America for a long period of time. Oh, yeah, understandably so. So he used his youth to develop himself inside a pro game overseas. Right. Which we're seeing more and more over the last few years. Yeah, we are. Um, and at this point, he has one year left on his contract. Okay. Isaac Walther. We're going to get into him right now. He will be playing, like I said, at the University of Vermont. Last season, he played in Sweden. This is his first year, so they're going to have to expend, extend his tendered rights for a year or two. Okay. He was drafted at 18, at 17, so that does leave a little bit of a, a little bit of room for him. Yeah, it does. Uh, this year, uh, Parsonen will be loaned to TPS Liga. Uh, to see if he can't repeat what he did last year, and then he will be coming over. Um, I, at the end of the day, I think that's all going to come down to what Nashville is willing to do for him. Right. Um, Gunnar, Gunnar Wolf Fontaine, uh, he will be playing for Northeastern. Adam Willsby will be playing for Skolovsky AIK. Um, Zachary LaRue will be playing for the Halifax Mooseheads. Anton Olsen, our newest draft pick from the Malmo Redhawks in the SHO, will be playing for the Malmo Redhawks. <laughs> 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 um, and then Simeon Chistyakov is in the KHL. He is a defenseman. We are about to get into him a little bit. I know that he was drafted in 2019. He's 19 years old. Um, he has signed through 2022-23. And you know, for those fans that don't know, please enlighten us. The minimum age to play in the AHL is is 19. Okay. Your birthday has to be after July. Or before July. Before July. Right. So anybody beyond tomorrow will be that turns eight turns nineteen will be ineligible to play in the AHL. Which is why LaRue is not there. Now, LaRue was signed. I have a feeling Nashville wants to invite him to camp, see what he's got. If they feel he's ready, they'll just pull him right in. Right. If not, we'll see. Now, LaRue can play center. One of the interesting parts of that, and I think that's something I'm more willing to get into now than you know, months from now when camp's around and then I got to go through that mess. Right. I'm kind of going to give that little hint right now. You got the herd line with Sissons, Janelle, and Trennan. Yeah. Imagine this for a, a top nine. You got the herd line. Then you bring in Cousins, Olivier, and LaRue. There's your bottom six. Woo-hoo! Uh -huh. That's the bottom six. And even so, you can move the herd line to the third line. Yeah. Your fourth line, you throw them out there third. And you let the young guy play fourth line to get him some NHL time. Right. Because you can't play him in the AHL. With that all being said, there's a lot of question marks being had. Um, yeah. How much damage will the Delta variant do to hockey? Um, how What will happen? As we all sit, football's planning to go off, no problem, full fans. As it sits, hockey's planning to go off, no problem, full fans. Mass right. 
are going to be mandatory indoor events. That is one thing we are being told, vaccine or no vaccine. That's one thing I'm hearing, vaccine or no vaccine, masks will be mandatory. Right. As frustrating as that sounds to some of us who got the vaccine so that we didn't have to wear them. Nature has its own course. As they said in Jurassic Park, nature finds a way. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, and here's the thing. I have a crap list. COVID, you're still on it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, you know. Not getting uh, off of it. <laughs> not anytime soon. Nope. <laughs> you know, but I want to say this to the fans that have stuck with us, the fans that have been there for us through the COVID, through, through all that, that were there for us. Thank you. We hope to bring you more hockey content. We are looking forward to rookie camp coming up. We yeah. are looking forward to that. Um, kudos to Green Bay for doing what Green Bay did. I'm not going to get into that because we're not a Packer podcast. Nope. <laughs> Uh, kudos to Green Bay. Kudos to the Brewers on their win tonight. Kudos to them and all the moves that they made in the trade deadline. Um, the Brewers are uh, premier, uh, one of the premier sponsors of the Milwaukee Admirals. So kudos yep. to the Brewers for all that they do for the Admirals. Um, and also yeah, kudos thank to you. what they do for the Nashville Sound. Right. Because the Nashville Sound are the AAA affiliate of the Milwaukee Brewers. Isn't it ironic, though? We're the AAA technically affiliate of the Predators, and the uh, Nashville team is the AAA affiliate of our baseball team. That's yeah. great. <laughs> also, good luck to um, both the Packers and Titans on their upcoming season. Um, football starts soon. We're fully aware of this, yeah. obviously, as people who pay attention. Also, yet again, congratulations to the Milwaukee Bucks on your NBA championship. As yeah. you can see how happy we were about that. Um, kudos to the Seattle Kraken for getting to through your expansion and first NHL draft. And welcome. And welcome. Uh, hopefully y'all can get it off and cracking this year. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, there's going to be a lot of pun joke, punny jokes when we play them, but let's leave that there. Y'all know you guys come to us because we give you a real emotion, real te- real shows. And we try to make it as fun and funny as possible because if we can't make you laugh, you are watching the wrong podcast. By the way, right. <laughs> the wrong podcast. I kind of uh, made a whoopsie and was watching a podcast on uh, in the AHL. To those of you that watch The Wolf Dead, check out their most recent episode where they slam us. They slam us because, well, the Wolf Den is an AHL podcast covering the Chicago Wolves. Right. Naturally, there are rivals. Naturally, the only reason that they were created by the Wolves was to slow us down. Mm -hmm. I wanted to put this out there because they do not have a Facebook page. They do not have a YouTube page. They only have SoundCloud. They have no structure. The most recent thing they have talked about is Carolina signing Jake Bean or trading for J- trading Jake Bean. I mean, you you have done nothing to warrant throwing a shot at us. Get to 1,000, almost 1,500 likes, which Thank you. Yes, thank you, everyone. That is our goal for this off season. So thank you all to that. Yeah. <laughs> I would also like to thank uh, our significant others. <laughs> if it wasn't for John's significant other, you guys would not have had graphics. Thank you to his wife so much. Yo, yo, <laughs> no, you come here. <laughs> thank you to Stephanie Lewandowski yeah. so much this week for all that you put in this week. Um, you know, my wife, she puts up with my uh, crazy attitude, which well, this week's been nuts. We've been trying with to get too. This, <laughs> this week's been kind of nuts. We've family been, business. Yeah, it is a family business, but, you know, we've all made sure that everybody was taken care of. We've made sure that everything, this show's gone off without a hitch, and we've made sure that you guys have the info you need. 
yep. whether we are in the mood or not. <laughs> right. Trust me, Wednesday was a not. Right. Wednesday was probably our worst day outside of today, um, which is why we're here so, so late. Yes, and we apologize for that. Oh, Monday was also his worst day. But, but let's I, not get into Monday. Get into it. Yeah. No. <laughs> Mon- Monday sucked. Yeah. yeah. Sunday sucked. This whole week's Monday been rough sucked. for everyone. Sunday we- sucked. <laughs> Yeah, but we're here now. We're giving you the podcast. It's Happy almost to be August, here. so hopefully things will settle down. Right. Hopefully we could get ready to go back to hockey. Hopefully we could get ready to have enjoyment back in our lives. Because I'm going to tell you one of the weirdest things I'm about to say ever on this podcast. But I miss the smell of freshly shaved ice. <laughs> I miss the smell of Zamboni exhaust. I mean, right, so, we're 78 days out 78 from the Admirals days. home opener, October 16th. And we're, what, 76 from the Preds opener against the Seattle Kraken. Right. Mm-hmm. That ought to be fun. I mean, we should be. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of stuff coming up. Um, I also would like to uh, give a little bit of kudos and funny ha-has to the Seattle Kraken. You drafted a player in the expansion draft from the Washington <laughs> Capitals. Uh, and then you trade him back. <laughs> yeah, I saw that today, too. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> well, understandably so. You guys did sign Grubauer, so you don't really need him. <laughs> right. As much as that irritates John. Philip Grubauer as well. As if anybody knows this podcast, yes, I'm an Avalanche fan, but I'm a diehard Admiral fan and Predator fan too. Yes, that, that's like me with my Sabres. Before the Preds came into the league, I was a diehard Sabres fan. Still, I'm a Sabres fan. Yes, you can give me all the crap in the world <laughs> you want. But guess what? I say it myself, so don't feel bad. I would really like us to quit being the butt end of a joke for the last decade. Right. But, you know, every team goes through those slumps. Chicago they do. went through it in the early, in the mid 2000s, all the way back to the 90s. So, you know, teams take a while sometimes to rebuild. Sometimes they can rebuild in two years. Sometimes they can rebuild in 10 years. In five. In five, in 10, and you never know. Usually oh. three to five is the target goal nowadays, whether it happens or not is all up to luck and now things now, go i do have an update for the jack eichel situation all right jack eichel has filed with the nhlpa as a um as i believe it was an injunction against the buffalo sabers for okay. medical tampering because they do not want him to have this surgery and then try to trade him if he cannot play. Okay. So that would leave them stuck with a $10 million contract for the season. What they're trying, the Sabres are trying to do is talk him out of it and let him play through it. Now, here's the thing. Having a surgery on a herniated disc is not exactly ideal for any NHL team. It will hurt his stock and you will not get what you want for him. Without the surgery, however, you're going to have the same problem. And a possible career, shorter career. So it is kind of, uh, geez, it, it's, it's no matter what, his stock is not worth what you're going to want from him. No, and his safety should be your priority. You know, one of the, one of the bigger things I wanted to bring to everyone's attention here is, you know, Tarasenko is still sitting out there. Teams are going to want him more than they're going to want Eichel. And Tarasenko has a shoulder issue. If shoulder issues are a lot easier to overcome than than back issues, trust me, I'm going through one. It is not. And I'm going through a shoulder issue myself. So, you know, I can barely move. And John's watched me over the last week try and figure out how to navigate this stuff. And it is not fun. Mm -hmm. Um. You know, I am much gladly appreciative of everyone who has kind of you know, I've had people message me, hey, man, how you doing? Are you okay? I haven't seen that of you on the podcast. Normally, you guys are on top of stuff, you know. 
this week has not been good. Next week we come, we're coming back. We have all the scheduled stuff that we were planning for next week will be done next week by end of week. Right. So we can, we have nothing legit scheduled, but the content that we had planned for YouTube is still on the board for next week. We know that we said we were going to release it this week, but with John right. uh, being sick, he it's literally a cold. And uh, I have the little one, so he doesn't want to give it to my family, duly respected. And we need um, my operating system that I have here to record that video. So, and until we can, he can get healthy, um, all of those YouTube videos that we so have planned kind of hit the back burner until our health is in, in place. Now, I know that that may seem a little frustrating to some of you, but to uh, us, that's great because it's time off. <laughs> well, a little time through the day. <laughs> yeah, a little time off will do Enough us good. to rest and work on recovering. Yeah, um, which is what we've been trying to do. It's you know 50-50 on the shot given the day. Some days are good, some days are bad. Right. Ten steps forward, ten steps back, made about even. But like we were all saying, I just wanted to say thank you to everybody. Sorry yeah, it's so late. Um, for those of you, if it does not get this, you do not see this till morning. Hope you have a great morning and enjoy our show. Yes. If you watch it tonight, sweet thank dreams. You being up to watch. Sweet dreams. Yeah. Don't let the blue jackets bite. <laughs> um, you know, and uh, hopefully everybody is able to enjoy their weekend. Enjoy your weekend. Summer's coming down to a close. Enjoy what you got. Go camping, go fishing, go do whatever. Go to a baseball game. Go have fun while you can. We do not know what's coming. That right. is tomorrow is never guaranteed. So live every day. Enjoy it. Thank you all for watching. This has been from Milwaukee to Nashville. Brought to you by the folks at Hockey Locker. We will see you guys probably early next week. Yep. <laughs>